Welcome back guys, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk to you guys about today, so let's jump into the charts. Be sure to like the video because it helps me out a lot, and be sure to watch all of this because uh, it's very, very useful information, okay? So let's jump straight in, quick, fast information that's relevant to you on the blockchain, so let's have a look here for Bitcoin, right? Uh, first of all, we've got Caproli Bitcoin Macro Index, one of the best charts uh, in the world here uh, for deciding where we are in the cycles with Bitcoin. You can see still orange, hasn't really been updated since the 28th, so we'll wait for that to come through over the next few days, see if it is still orange. I imagine it will be. Uh, I don't think it will be red. If it's red, it's an absolutely terrible sign uh, in which we can literally just cascade down, right? Every time this thing is red, uh, we just go down a lot of the time here, right? So, uh, what we can say is yes, orange in a pullback. We have been pulling back for quite some time here. And before we do move on to the next chart, I just want to bring your attention to this part in the 2017 run. Okay, so how long were we orange in the 2017 run and what did that look like? Uh, if we go down to here, this is the 2017 run and this is uh, the same chart but in an oscillator form. And we can see that yes, uh, we. We, we weren't orange for that long. And if we compare that to where we are uh, right now, okay, it's pretty much a similar distance in terms of time here uh, where it has been orange before we reverse and continue the run up. Now, if we want to continue the run up here, uh, we're going to have to do it pretty soon because, uh, well... I mean, if this does turn red, it's bad. It's seriously, seriously bad, like uh, big, big dumps from there, double digit dumps, okay? Uh, so just be careful and double digit percentage dumps, all right? Uh, so just be careful out there because, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's some really, really crucial information that you should not be ignoring. Uh, let's take a look at the liquidation chart and then we will jump in to some strategies here, okay? Uh, but we can see here just now, uh, we did actually slam a pretty decent liquidation level. So what this is, if you are a bit newer to trading, guys, I'm just checking, I haven't got anything on my nose. I've got an itch. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, what, what we're saying here is, yes, this is essentially an order book showing where people will be liquidated if the price gets there. Market makers will push the price to these points so then they can buy that contract on the liquidation from the exchange and then uh, bring the price back up because they've got the money to do that and then they've now got this extra contract uh, that they've taken off a retail user, right? That's pretty much how it works here. And we can see here that they've just swiped up a good old 100 milli uh, in this area on the way down as we've been trickling down today, okay? Uh, key areas to watch here, if we do want to have a little v shape recovery and we do bounce from this area and there is merit to say that we do bounce from this area which we'll get into in a minute okay uh, but uh, yeah I mean there's there's a very very key liquidation level up at 43.9 okay and that is around our highs here or our more recent highs uh, so what we can say is uh, is it likely that we get up there before we continue down here well the trend is down right now so uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be su super confident in banging in along and expecting us to get up there of course but what I will say is uh 41.6 is pretty low, okay? It is pretty low. Uh, it is something that is achievable for Bitcoin. It can get down there if we do want to continue this downward slope. But uh, if we do start banging it up and breaking resistances, ideally this trend line here that's coming down, then uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great sign that we do end up smashing it up to 43.9 from there. Um, but yeah, that's more of a V shape. Uh, basically, this would be a trap over the day. Then we've got CME opening and stuff like that. Uh, not CME opening, um, the, the, the grayscale stuff, right? The, the US markets coming online uh, where we can, uh, yeah, we can expect them to be buying there uh, if we do uh, bang it above that level, okay? Uh, next up here, yeah, we are going to go into the charts, but what I do want to say here is, guys, uh, we are doing copy trading challenge at the moment. It's from 5K to 100K. You can just press follow, copy my trades, and then uh, you are good to go. Uh, a little bit of a, a pre Pre-call here to the TA I'm about to show you, but yes, we are in the middle of a measure move towards the downside, uh, and that measure move does end around this 41.7 area, guys. So uh, just be careful, and and yeah, that's kind of the merit to say that we could potentially get down there before we head up. But um, there's also merit to say that we don't do that because we did complete half the measure move towards the upside as well. Okay, so maybe this is just a trappy area where they do consolidate, where they do steal people's money uh, with this uh, this liquidation hunting, right? And then we resume uh, over the next few weeks uh, as the market does kind of recover from that point or as news comes out uh, as it tends to do every month or so right to kind of push some petrol into the uh, the markets and get it moving okay uh, but yeah we're 10% up here on our challenge good stuff we will be trading that again starting next week so feel free to sign up in the description for fair desk uh, you can literally get ridiculous bonuses with this but uh, if you do just want to copy my trades on there feel free um 
And yeah, besides that, we're going to be teaching you some strategies here. There's a few webinar trades that you could have got in the past few days. Uh, and this is something I teach called the webinar strategy. So feel free, sign up for that. You don't want to miss this. This is probably one of the biggest edges in the market, uh, particularly when we're trending. Okay, uh, so feel free, reserve your seat, whack your email in. Uh, and there's only 25 seats, guys. So uh, yeah, feel free to do that. And you can ask us questions throughout the stream, all of that good stuff. Okay, so let's jump in to the charts. Bada boom, bada bing. Let's have a look here. Uh, we can see general from what we drew last time we did have this beautiful measure move to potentially go from okay unfortunately it completed half the measure move but we did get a couple good trades in along the way here okay uh, so how did we play this let's just get rid of this first and then make this a bit uh, easier. Okay, so I, I said in my Telegram group, if you guys remember, uh, when we were up in this area, I said, okay, I think we were somewhere around here. I said, okay, the webinar strategy will work here, but based on this pump and, and based on how trappy it looks, it's it's probably about 60% success rate rather than a normal 80% success rate, right? Uh, so if we are looking at this, yeah, we, we did get into this position and we did get a nice little long here from this. Uh, and again, as you guys know, it's uh, it's a 1% trade towards the upside. Uh, didn't even go near a stop loss and uh, yeah that was that was free money there that was free money uh, as we like to say and we broke over this resistance and another reason why this this is less valid it's, it's still profitable okay but uh, yeah the, the fact that we got this clump here we're not like completely clear of our highs here right uh, where it's really good or or we're not completely breaking down uh, where it's really good for the the downwards trades as well right the shorts but uh, yeah that was the first trade we took okay and um before that as well guys as you guys know i think i said this in the last video uh, but we did actually have some uh, some cme trades uh, that did come through as well so it's been a pretty good time here i'm um, probably on like a seven or eight trade win streak as bitcoin does look like it wants to pump up here uh, we got Quite a lot left in this hour so this could just be another dirty wick and then we head down to kind of 42 one uh but yeah what am i looking for next guys what is the next trade what is the next edge in the market uh, as you guys know i've been trading for six years and i was taught by professional traders okay uh, i basically had them as mentors and they taught me the way to do it and what we can say with this is um yeah, there's some beautiful edges arising uh, if we can get this. And we talked about this in uh, in the previous uh, chart that we looked at, right? This is the um, this is the wedge we're looking at. And uh, yeah, what, what we can expect here is if we do head up from this point, uh, then we'll be looking for something along the lines of this. Obviously, if it is a sideways, then this is going to be um, a less of a distance of a move, right? So it could be something like this that aligns more with our, our resistance that was previously support. And um, we'll bring it up to the four hours so it looks a little bit better here, right? But that would be more on a shorter time frame hourly this kind of area but with this spillover with us hitting the price action channel with us tapping this uh well not tapping smashing through obliterating uh, the 21 ema uh, we can say that yes a bounce here is probably quite likely uh, even if it is short term back up to 43k and then continuation down we like to do that when the momentum wears off like this okay uh, and you can see this pretty clearly towards the up and down side to the downwards moves right we test the moving averages we bounce we test the moving average we bounce and we slowly break down uh, these moving averages one by one okay and then we get another wave or we reverse right uh, and, and that's pretty much one of the, the ways you need to be thinking about momentum here uh, as you are trading. And same thing here uh, towards the upside. Obviously, this was a very trappy area because we had the ETF news. But uh, yeah, very, very similar thing. We come up, we test, we bounce, we, we break, uh, we test, we bounce. Okay, all of this stuff and um, yeah, that's really how you should be thinking about this. Another example here. Okay, so if we are looking at this downwards, um, or sorry, this upwards move here on the four hour, uh, where we have tested this um, this seven SMA multiple times. Okay, yeah, it does make sense for us to have this spill over here. Uh, and yeah, just unfortunately, we didn't complete this move. But uh, as I did tell you in the Telegram, guys, I got in along uh, the second long around this area. And then I basically made another 1% trade and got out of that once this did look like it was dumping. And it was uh, it was it was a difficult one to explain why this is dumping. But it was it was more the way the candle was behaving, right? You know, you can kind of see it when it's live, and it's kind of doing this thing. Uh, yeah, you, just I, it may even be subconscious. It's not it's really quite hard to put into words uh but yeah it was it was something where i was like yep yeah, this looks like a trap i'm out or i'm not confident in the the strength of this wave in terms of the healthiness of the way the candles are moving right uh so yeah from that point i just trusted my gut got out there i know that's not what you want to hear <laughs> but um yeah i mean it turned out to be a great decision and i did let you guys know as soon as that happened uh, in the telegram so feel free to join that if you do want updates like that anyway okay uh, so if we are looking at this right now 
Uh, let's just go back to the hourly here and see if this trend line is valid. Okay, so yeah, we've got this trend line here. This is actually a bad sign. It means that we could potentially get a measure move towards the downside on the hourly. Okay, uh, so if we are looking at this right here, we could probably say something along the lines of this. Okay, so we've got one, one hit, two hit, three hit, four hit. That's what we're looking for. And a pretty nice zigzag on the way down as well. Okay, so we've come down, we've broke down, we're retesting this trend line right now. Uh, do I want to take this trade towards the downside? I'm not I'm not really into this one, okay? And the reason for that is because we're so close to this price action channel, okay? We've had this big dump down on the four hour. When in doubt, zoom out. I would expect a small bounce here. I do expect it to be very volatile in this area. Uh, and yeah, I I'm not really looking for an extension of this move just yet. But if you are an audacious, adventurous trader here, guys, um, then feel free to like the video. Uh, but also, uh, this is also a trade that you could potentially be targeting, okay? And uh, what you can say with this is, um, yeah, I mean, there is is still a move here it's not fantastic it's not even one percent but if you're aggressive okay and you use that um fair desk uh, vip that you get for free when you sign up then feel free uh this would actually be a trade that potentially does come through um and you can see this wick coming through already but we'll see we'll see okay we don't have a wick towards the lower side on this last hourly candle which is typically a bearish sign uh so yeah We'll be, we'll be monitoring that, but I won't be taking this trade, just full disclosure. It's a bit too violent for me, and I'm more waiting for the move up. Okay, I'm more waiting for the move up. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about uh, areas in which we can bounce. Okay, obviously we've talked about the price action channel. That's important on the four hour. Uh, that's exactly uh, where we are. We're also pretty overextended on the one hour as well here, right? So I would expect us to potentially head up. Um, and uh, yeah, just more, more importantly, the four hour, we do have this very, very important trend line coming in around this area, 42.1. This is probably the key area I'm looking for right now, 42.1. If we do hold on 42.1, guys, that is a huge sign. Uh, and we could potentially just break our highs from there and get pretty violent towards the upside. Okay, we are midweek here. Okay, so a lot of things can happen. And um, yeah, don't don't feel ashamed if you if, if you're not in a trade here. There's no need to be in a trade here. We're in the jungle, as we like to say here, right? And in the jungle just means in between all of the moving averages. And it, it can get very messy in these areas. Whereas if, if we're trending like so, uh, at, like we've seen here, and like we saw with our CME edge over here, then, uh, yeah, I mean, there are very, very decent trades to be had when we are above all major moving averages on a four hour or below all major moving averages on a four hour, okay? Uh, so, um, yeah, that's that's just a bit of advice there for you guys where, uh, yes, you can see here very, very easy trades off this moving averages, even on a four hour, a very predictable price action. But as soon as we lose the moving averages, that's where it gets volatile. And you can see the same thing here. Okay, uh, you could trade this all the way up. But then as soon as we're back in this area, very, very, very volatile. All right. And this, this is congruent throughout Bitcoin, uh, usually most of the time. So after a wave, we will usually go sideways in a range. And this is where it can get quite sticky. Okay, but um, yeah, once once the trend starts again, which it always does, okay, you got to think of Bitcoin and most trading like a spring. Okay, uh, so it goes into momentum and then it kind of coils up again. And then boing, uh, it, uh, it, it becomes very easy to know what's going to happen with it. All right. Uh, so with that said and done, guys. Let's take a look at the trade I'm looking for here. Okay, so the trade I'm looking for next is a potential move. Um, let's have a look here. If we do reclaim this, I'll probably look for a move up because we'll be above all major moving averages on the four hour. Uh, so if we do head up from this point, I would be expecting the moving averages to do something like this. Okay, so we'll probably climb up here and there, there will probably be some kind of area or air pocket here in which we can find uh, a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a move coming through. If that does take too long, it's absolutely fine because Friday is nearly here and when Friday is is coming to an end then that's when cme closes and that's when we get uh, probably the biggest edge on the market right one of the biggest edge on the markets which is cme closes okay so institutions stop trading because it's a weekend uh the price moves okay and then yeah, you can expect the price to move back to that CME close most of the time here, 70, 80% of the time uh, before the weekend is up, okay? That doesn't include when uh, the US are on holiday, okay? But um, yeah, most weekends this does come into fruition. And if not, it's a CME gap in which uh, that usually gets filled or it has got filled pretty much 100% of the time uh, so far here um, in most assets, even if it does take a few months. But uh, yeah, we usually just have a stop loss outside the range if that's the case, okay? But a quick edge, something that works very, very well is that CME side. And I'm here to teach you guys about actual things that work here, okay? Actual things that work. Uh, I could tell you lots of things about being bullish here or being super, super bearish. But uh, to be honest, guys, 
that's very misleading. A lot of YouTubers will mislead you uh, with that, right? So I'm just going to tell you what I'm looking for, the trades I'm going for. And as of right now, there is a small trade I'd be looking for uh, around 43k if we do want to break out in this volume. Okay. Besides that, it is if we lose this beautiful trend line here, but I want to see multiple candle closes underneath that bad boy. And if we do head down, let's say we do get down here by the end of tonight. Okay. So about 41.6, uh, then I would actually still expect us to head up from that point, retest. Okay, and then once we break this low, and if it is a continuation, then uh, yeah, this will be a fantastic area to be finding trades towards the downside, particularly with the webinar strategy, that kind of stuff uh, in which, yeah, we can make tons of money. Okay, tons of money. Uh, besides that, if we do finish in the next 28 minutes here, which is at 43k, then uh, that's actually a really, really bullish sign. And we could probably expect our, our measure move to actually be complete from this point um, or be on the road to being complete because the reason for this is because we would still be above this support here, right? It's currently resistance, but if we get above this in the next 28 minutes, which is a big ask, I doubt this is going to happen, but uh, if it does, then we'll have a massive wick here, okay? And wicks tend to be absorbed towards the other side, okay? So massive wick here, the next candle, boom, all right? And then we're basically back where we were, and this would just go down as a retest after breaking over it. And uh, this is actually still pretty valid because we didn't retest this, right? We haven't retested this uh, besides here, of course, right? But um, yeah, on the way up, we usually like to retest. Okay, we did not do that. And um, yeah, if we do get a violent move up here, I mean, you're probably you be watching this after this has happened, but <laughs> if it does get up here, then boom. Um, yeah, very, very bullish sign for the short term anyway. Besides that, yeah, I expect sideways over the next few days unless this dump was, wants to get more aggressive. Uh, but if it does get more aggressive, it's going to be an interesting one because usually when we smash through moving averages like this, we like to come back and retest them, okay? Uh, so it just kind of goes in line with what I'm thinking towards the downside there. Um, and yeah, besides that, we do have a high here as well. So let's actually draw another pattern coming through. There was another pattern I wanted to show you. Um, let me just see if my blind mind can find it. Nice little rhyme there. Uh, we can see something like this, the bigger side of things coming through. Uh, let's just do this. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's valid. That's valid, right? Yeah, pretty valid. Uh, less valid in the middle, of course, here. But this wave is pretty valid. Uh, and if we do want to head down first, then this could be a massive, massive move towards the upside. I'm talking serious, serious move. All right, Twen uh, up to 48K again, up to our highs for this run. All right, uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. It's not something I'm I'm super, um, super expecting here, but uh, just be careful because if we do start banging it up and it is aggressive and we want to complete this measure move, then uh, this, is, this could be kind of the next path that we'd be looking at as well. All right, so uh, yeah, just keep an eye on it. Don't don't be too excited or FOMO-ish about this, but um, yeah, just a possibility here. Bigger patterns always tend to work out a lot better, okay? And there's another thing here that we can see. This is what I wanted to show you here, yeah. So we've got a nice wedge structure here. Got a nice wedge structure here on the daily, okay? Uh, there's quite a lot going on on this chart. So what we're going to do is get rid of the WAD machine real quick. Boom, okay? And um, we'll leave these up here because these are very important levels. So we've got the weekly volume wasted ATR band at 49K. Uh, we got the daily, uh, we got the three day volume weighted ATR band at uh, 41.7. Okay, if we hold this level, it's going to be very, very bullish, super bullish. Um, but the fact that we've already lost it and we've kind of messed around it here a little bit, then uh, yeah, I mean, we did talk about potentially retesting this daily and then continuation towards the downside. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing to keep in mind. There's also a fantastic trade here if we do lose the 40k area, super long term, of course, um, unless we do seriously aggressively dump here today. But uh, yeah, there's a beautiful trade as you can see here, right? Beautiful little trade where we just lose this low at 38.5 and we bang that down to 36k. We talked about that in the last video, but uh, yeah, just a quick reminder there. All right, if we do want to stay inside this wedge, then uh, the other other option is banging it above 53k, 53.4, that kind of area, and then smashing it up to the 66k's all-time highs. Let's go. Okay, but we'll see. We'll see. And I know the all-time high is like 69, but you know, it's pretty close. It's, it's around that area if we do want to just get super uh, aggressive towards the upside. But um, again, I'm still waiting for, for May, uh, April, sorry, mid-April. Uh, and it's not that far away when you look at the chart like this. But I'm still waiting for April before we do get anything along those lines. That's when the halvening is predicted to be, according to the blockchain. Okay, and the speed of which blocks are being mined. So um, yeah, 
th this is it. This is it. This is pretty much the whole video. <laughs> if you do want to learn, uh, learn a little strategy here, feel free, head over to um, Bitcoin, not Bitcoin Beats. Um, what is it? What is it? Newmoneynetwork.net slash training, where you can sign up to learn the strategy. And uh, if you are a beginner, this is absolutely for you. This is fantastic. Uh, you will learn a hell of a lot. This is everything my mentors taught me when I started. Okay. Uh, besides that, guys, uh, yeah, Fairdesk here in the description as well. Feel free to check that out. And Cryptonomy as well is in there if you do want a, a bit more of a long-term investment. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Peace out. Goodbye from me, Hamilton. Cheers.